Hi, I'm Paul from the Studio Rats, and today I'm joined by Stephen Reed Williams. And today we're going to be looking at Ravel, which is the piano VI that comes with Luna. So, Steve, how are you doing? Hello, mate. I'm good, mate. You? Good, yeah. All good. All good. All good. So you've had you've had Ravel for how long now? A few about a four or five days. Yeah. So, and uh, what are your thoughts so far? Yeah, mate, it's lovely. It's really nice. Um, I'm always a little bit fearful when someone brings out a new um, piano sample. It's um, you know, there's some there's some great ones and there's some not so great ones, uh, but this one seems to be uh, fantastic so far. I've used it in a different, you know, a few different contexts, and it sounds sounds wicked. So yeah, yeah. Do you want to go through a couple of things? What is your well? What do you think of the latency first of all? Do you want to do you notice any latency when you when you're playing it? No, um, it's fantastic. It's really responsive. I'm using um, a, a very old RD seven hundred SX piano here, just um, a stage piano. Um, and it's it's playing great. That's one of the first things you notice when you play a, a, a new piano instrument like this is how well it responds to the you know to your fingers. And uh, it's it's very immediate, and everything you do on the keys seems to translate to the piano. Um, and you know, piano players will know what I'm talking about there. It's uh, it's, it's a very responsive instrument actually. Awesome. Yeah, do you want to play us some stuff? Yeah. So so we've got it set at the moment just to just the middle setting on the tone there, and the dynamics are in the middle too. Um, So you can hear like right across the range. It sounds, sounds awesome. it sounds really sweet actually. Yeah, um, it sounds awesome. Yeah, the bottom end. So the first thing piano players do when they test the piano is like, well, how does it sound at the bottom? And it's got that, that lovely rich bottom end, but also quite bitey, cuts through really nicely. It's not muddy down there. Um, and then and the tops. And it's just got a really nice, uh, nice rounded tone, actually. Really usable, not too scoopy, nice in the middle as well. So it'll cut through in a, in a mix and, and really usable. You can, you know, basically EQ that to your heart's content. It's got lots, lots of tone in there. Awesome. I noticed as well that you can really hear the, well, they've really emulated the, the pedal noise as well. When you're playing at the top in, yeah, I can really me, hear it. And you can hear that? Yeah. So that's um, that, that's me stamping on the sustain pedal there. Uh, when you do that on a real piano, obviously all the hammers lift off the strings and you get these sympathetic resonances. Um, you can't have a real piano sound without those, you know, um, resonances operating. So when you play with the pedal down versus when you play with it up, it's it's just me just playing without the pedal. But when you put it down, the sound really opens up like a piano would. Yeah, it's lovely. So you can hear, yeah, so it sounds organic, like a real piano would. You, the thing is, you don't want it to be too clean. You don't want it to sound too perfect. Sometimes when, the, when these instruments come out, they're, they're just a little bit too cleaned up. Um, uh, and I guess it depends on the kind of music you're doing, but certainly for me and the kind of stuff I do, I want it to sound like it's a piano in a room. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and you, that's, how, that's how a piano sounds in a room. Talking about room, yeah. we've got the control with the mics where you can have close and yeah. room. Do you want to show that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So down here, so we've basically got a, a very simple slider here, which moves the mics from close position to room. So obviously self-explanatory, move it over to the right and you get more of the room sound. So if I, if I put it right to the, uh, to the full setting, So you can hear a lot of room there. Yeah. Versus when you take it right back, you can. Oh, let's do that again. Here we go. I love that little graphic. Yeah, it's great. Um, to the to the closer sound.
so that you know for more intimate kind of sound and i see it's got reverse section yeah. it which which i think is quite an unusual thing i mean, yeah. I mean how you know how often do you use a reverse piano but well yeah so i was i was playing with it so i was thinking <clears> when when am i going to use that i mean you know and and, and then i realized that i had used that before in a, oh, in yeah. a yeah <laughs> uh, a track i did a few years ago um obviously it's something you can accomplish with with plugins um but i like the fact that they've built it in um let me show you it's crazy yeah. um and what's and it also it's a it, you can have a blend between the the reverse sound uh, and the standard sound so you get the transients as well as the reverse so oh, um, awesome. but if i keep the mix low um for now uh so the reverse length is short so i turn that up so halfway so you've got that so you've got the piano and the reversed sorry that's cool yeah Oh, okay. I get it. Yeah, I get it. So obviously you can take the mix all the way up and have nothing but reverse. So. Which is cool. And also you can adjust the reverse length as well. So somewhere in the middle there. So. Which is, a, which is you know, it's a lovely effect. I love it. You, yeah, that's, that's you, isn't it? The, producer right there you could do it's cool oh yeah i could and i could program in the notes and do that yeah it's all fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really nice yeah yeah that's great and obviously it's really like i said you can have it somewhere in the middle you know so you can you can blend the two together you can also have you know very long so. oh nice yeah it's cool if you've got a place to use it. Then... Yeah, absolutely. What about the, what, uh, they've got a cog, like a settings icon there. What yeah. happens if you click on that? We've got here. So, so we've got a tuning option. It's obviously st set to standard 440 at the moment. Um, we've got a polyphony setting. So obviously you can use up more memory, um, choosing the large one, um, which I haven't actually tried yet. Should we chance it? <laughs> yeah, do it. Go on, give it a go. Um, so, I mean, it's it's a massive library. So, so we should probably talk about that. Yeah. When yeah, when you buy Ravel, I think it's about ten gig. It is just under, I think. Yeah. Is it just under? So it's quite a sizable, sizable. Yeah, it's a good chunk sample of library, uh, yeah. good chunk of samples. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what you need up? to do a piano properly. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And mate, I used to have I used to have a Roland D twenty. It was fine. <laughs> <laughs> is that where you learn your two chords? <laughs> so, yeah. Let's turn the reverse off, shall we? Let's, yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> uh, it's worth mentioning, by the way, that it's a really simple interface. Um, yeah. So, you know, other, there are other options, you know, the other piano samples where you get, you know, you can adjust the kinds of microphones and the, the various, you know, positions down to the, you know, to the, to the millimeter. Um, yeah. This doesn't do that. And for me, that's a good thing. So you can decide whether, you know, that's a good thing for you or not. But um, I like the simplicity of it. Um, and yeah, I'm with you on that. The fact that it's just a few, you know, a few things to mess around with, uh, is nice, and they're concentrated on the sound of the of the instrument, you know. So let's go back. So we're now on our full. coping it's all right awesome <laughs> so what have we got we've got tone and dynamics i guess that's the last things we can talk about oh, what's your setting on at the moment so they're on the middle so uh the tone again so what basically moving from here is is a darker tone to all the way to the brightest so if i go to the to the first setting here It's just a darker, a darker sound. Sounds amazing. Um, 
which makes you want to play in a certain way, or does me anyway. Uh, and then where we were before. Um, Right up to right is there. So it's just got more bite, you know, more more top end, it's a bit more energy in it. And again, you know, useful for different different kind of styles, you know. For you who's a you know proper pianist. Would you would you ever use that dynamic function? Yeah, this one's an interesting one. Essentially, all it does is either expands the the dynamic range or limits it. So okay. again, set in the middle is exactly where I want it. So from my point of view as a piano player, that's that's where it plays most naturally. If you move it to the to the setting here, all you're doing, you just that's my quietest note, which is no longer very quiet. You know, and my loudest note, which is as loud as it was before, but you've just squashed that range essentially. Uh, and then on the other side is is the opposite. Um, so that's our quietest. And then right up to, you know, very loud. Um, awesome. But to me, it seems most natural in that middle position. Uh, you know, where, again, where a, a piano would be. dynamic range awesome. but that's you know that's where you where you'd be with a real piano that's that great kind of level that's but awesome. it's nice to have the option sometimes if you're playing a passage or a phrase in a mix um and you want it to to sit a little better you might want to reduce the dy dynamic range so that you know your quieter notes are, st are still coming through and if you want to do that at the input stage you know when you're actually playing that's dead handy um again with these things you can squash it afterwards but as a piano player if you're if you're playing part of a mix perhaps mm -hmm. And it's not exposed, not on its own. You might want it to sit a bit better like that by bringing up some of the, you know, the dynamics, helping it sit. Awesome. So just before you play us out, Steve, yeah, tell everyone where they can where they can listen to your Facebook gig. And it's on Sunday nights, you say? Yeah, Sunday night, eight o'clock. Uh, there's yep. a page called Project Corn Stream. Uh, see what they did there, Corn Stream. Um, Genius. Yeah, it's a it's a. Great little platform, lots of musicians playing on there most nights. I'm there Sundays at eight o'clock. Or you can find me on my page, um, my Facebook page is uh, SRW Music, I believe. Uh, or you search for me under Stephen Reed Williams. So why don't you play us out and I'll um, I'll fade out right in the important bit just when you're, you know, just when I'm you're really going. going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've been Paul Drew. And I've been Stephen Reed Williams. <laughs>